Good morning, everyone. It is a brand new year. Here we are on January 2nd. Welcome to Walk the Web. I'm Dr. Aaron Dishno, and you found us. <laughs> We're here. So today on the agenda, what I'm going to work on is I'm going to be cleaning up a little bit of stuff with the animation and with the avatars. And I also want to set it up in a way that currently every control that you click on your keyboard is hooked to one set of animations, which means if you click walk, it goes to the walk animation that you selected. If you go back up, it's the backup walk, it, the back walk. If it's the strife or the turn or everything else, it goes to that one set of animations. Now, we ran into this when we did paintball, and I knew we would, um, but there's gonna be different conditions that we want to switch out which set of animations we run. For example, when I pick up a paintball rifle, now all my animations should have a rifle in front of it. So I'm going to be using different animations and I need to make sure that it switches from the idle holding the rifle to, to running with the rifle to strifing to everything else. Every one of the animations now have the arms in a different position. So I want to use those particular animations. But see, I need them to hook up to the controls. So I was thinking a lot about this, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to set it up that when you select something, you can trigger which set of animations you want it to go to. If it looks for the animation and finds it already loaded, then basically it runs that animation. If not, it'll fall back to the original animation. So that's on the agenda. That's the kind of uh, process that I'm looking to do. And I'm going to use a global variable so that in your plugins, all you have to do is say, hey, when they pick up the rifle and they click on it, it picks it up in a hand and now they're using all those animations. And from there on forward, it will use those animations and not the other ones. So it's going to be a quick swap into them and we'll see what we can do. So there might be a little, there, there'll be some adjustments after I do it, I'm sure. But at the same time, uh, that's the agenda, that's the direction we're heading, and we'll see if we can get that in place. Because that not only works for paintball games and doing that, but for example, um, I have the mini golf game. So the mini golf when you're walking or turning or something, maybe you pick up the club different or hold it different or something, whatever it is. Uh, the other part is this will also support us for doing things like if you're sitting, if you sit, the idle needs to be sit. The turning should be maybe a body rotation so you're looking both directions. Uh, walking forward may step you out of that and trigger to go back into regular mode, for example. Um, there's, there's certain things that I'm gonna do that basically will be based on the types. Uh, you also have crawling, let's say, or crouching when he walks. You could tell it crouch mode and all of a sudden he crouches and walks and everything. Or you can even go to uh, crawling or even lying on the ground and moving and, you know, crawling that way. So we can have a number of animation sets that we just load, call it by a certain name, and then we just tell it as a global variable, this is the set I want to use. If it finds animation, it uses it. Otherwise, it goes back to the default animations. So that's the plan. Um, so with that, we're going to jump right in. I found one thing I want to correct first in the animation, so I'm going to start with that and move right into the other stuff. Okay, so code page, here we are. And for starters, what we have is um, I wanted to change which item he does to come into the scene. And when I clicked on a different one, it popped an error. So what I need to do is I need to check out what's going on with this one, find out why it popped an error, and it looks like I'm looking at load avatar 1168. So jump in there. Uh, load avatar is in my avatar directory. Load avatar right there. And 1168, I'll scroll a little faster. Um, 1168 happens right here. We're calling the avatars handler. And if there's an error on that page, then we need to go find it. So we have our avatar ID, which will be our anonymous one. Our Z animation is the value that comes from that particular item. Okay, transport one function, save transformation, or transport it 
animation, <laughs> transformation, transport animation, okay. And we go into the handler's avatar. So I think what's happening is it looks like, oops, expect end of JSON input. Oh, it may, uh, what happens is it errors on the JSON that it returns if the process didn't work when it went there. So oops, let me get that one out of the way. Okay, so on handlers, which are right here, avatars, something's wrong on this page and we're gonna find out. So we get all the values and we are saving, save avatar animation. It should be this one. This should be what we're getting back when we save it. Um, let me, let's find out. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take advantage of, without running that process right there, I want to see a couple different values come back and, and see if we can't uh, figure out which one is blank or something that should have a blank a thing. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Um, there's that one. Okay. All I'm doing is basically putting these values in here so I can grab them after it runs this process and see what was passed in here. I have a feeling that one of them that's supposed to be a number, for example, the speed speed ratio, I have a feeling that that one came in blank, which would kill our SQL statement. But we're going to find out. We're going to do this the technical way by passing all these values back. And that one's duplicated or du a duplicate, but that's not really a big problem because we're going to leave that one in here at last and delete these out afterwards. Okay, so that should show me what was passed in here just by using these different variables. So now if I go back to load avatar and this one has the response right here. So if I get the response and notice the response is just the raw response. There's no nested level of the response. So I should be able to just put in here, walk the web dot log, which is our console log. It's a function that allows us to do colors and all kinds of things also. So I'm gonna get these five values pick them right from here, avatar ID. I want to see if I found the avatar ID, that's the other part. Since I do have an avatar selected for my, um, you know, he's already loading in the scene, There, it means there should have found an avatar. We should have the animation ID because that's what we passed in as the ID uh, of which one we're changing it to. And this is the animation name, which means the it's, it's not technically a name of the animation, it's the animation what it gets called by. So in this case, it's an on start or whatever it is. And this one's the last one. So speed ratio. Have a feeling speed ratio is gonna come up blank, but we're gonna test this out and find out. So by doing this, just gonna restart. And there's another error that I already know is happening. And when it tries to bring them in from the beaming, for some reason, we're getting an error on that one. And it has to do with something within it. Get vertices data, which is part of Babylon, not part of my code. Um, but I'm using a beta version of Babylon at the moment for my development. So I may have to disable that as an option until that comes through clear or find out what's not updated or something. Maybe there's a file dependency that I haven't updated. I'll have to track that down. But in the meantime, if I go here, edit my avatar, avatar animations, when I click enter 3D scene and I want to change this, so if I pick one, um, we didn't get anything. So it did not go that far. If I expand that, 1168 still. Um, well, let's do this. If that doesn't work, um,
I know where the air is coming from. Let's see. Let's see. Save avatar animation. We should be hitting this one. Okay, just to do it. I want to see if there's a general error in here or if it has to do with the line item I'm working on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to return an empty set of... You know what? I'll return. I'm going to do this. Copy that. And I'm going to put that right here just so that we get some values back or at least the structure back. Make sure we get this far before we worry about the actual values. Uh, the other place I can check is I can check the web logs and see if there's, uh, are they, yeah, the log files and see if it's giving me an error. Good morning, happy new year. Okay, so I put all those in there. We should be able to get the values back without running this particular section now. Um, as long as there's no errors here, I don't see why that wouldn't work. That should give us this response right here without using those values. So without the values, I don't see anything structurally wrong. There's semicolons on the end of every line. Take a deep breath, then talk. No. <laughs> Okay, so refresh this page and got to get something to work before you can track down the rest of it. <laughs> You're so high tech. <laughs> okay, so we know that one fails. And when I come in here, oops, don't need colors. I need the animation. Enter and transport. Let's see. Nope, still popping an error, so it's not getting past that line. Oh, 1170. Oh, did I change my order of lines? 1170 is this one. So it did not get the response back from that particular piece. So the next best thing I can do is look at the log files. Let's find out if a log file was created for this and get the latest error from it. The session data of people using the server. <laughs> um, no, there's none in that file. Let's check. There's two. I have load balance web servers, so there's two servers I check. And in this particular one, um, doing a quick scan across this as I move, see if we can find the error file. Nope, I didn't see one, which means it didn't generate one. And there's still one more possibility, and that is our error log. Cut it here. And okay, we got a bunch of stuff in there. Core handlers, undefined variable, Z, avatar animation. Okay, well, that would explain what's happening. So I should have looked there first, right? Okay, so Z, Avatar animation. Ah, uh, avatar animation ID. There's our problem. No, that's what it is, avatar. So where is avatar animation coming in? Animation name. ID. Ah, there it is. That one right there didn't find the variable, and it's because, oh, save transportation. I'm in the wrong section altogether. I was thinking it was save animation. It's save transport animation, which would have pointed me right at it, and that explains why it couldn't pass that back and use that value. Okay. So we can restore this one, which was probably working in the first place. And I can use the excuse that today being a new year, it's like a Monday on a Thursday. 
<laughs> okay, helps if I use the right thing. So it's save transport animation. But see here, yes, yeah, save transport animation. I should have noticed that. And now it will probably all work. And I'm going to just back that off for a minute. Oops. There we go. I know. It's one thing you don't want to hear. Oops. No. <laughs> uh. Okay, we have this. Edit my avatar. Avatar animation. And 3D scene. Atomic enhancement. We're going to change that to transport rings. And it didn't error, which is a good sign. So now I'm going to close that and refresh. We still got to figure out what's why that one isn't working. Hey, welcome guys. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome raid. Yeah, woo. Happy New Year everyone. <laughs> Yeah, welcome to join us. Okay, and I refreshed this page and it didn't save it, so <laughs> let's see if I can fix what I'm doing here. Uh, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. I should have got the news section here. <laughs> How's everyone doing this morning? I'm getting there just cleaning up some animations and trying to find out why this one didn't work um i want to switch what it's doing here and said it's not playing nice at the moment so i'm gonna find out why and see if i can't see if i can't track down why this one process right here didn't play nice um yeah i gotta check a couple values here and find out but getting there getting there So how's your new year going? Yeah, and if you check on to, if you watch our Discord and jump in there, in fact, here, I can put in a, I can put in an earphone so I can hear it. But on Discord, uh, one of the things we have going on here is I posted, I, I created a Blender creation and I was working on it yesterday. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so uh, on Blend, um, on Discord, if you join us on there, you can always see what we're doing and what we're doing when we're not online. You can also catch me live there at different times. And thank you, Mr. Waffles, for passing that on there. Uh, but what we have is I posted in Blender Creations, added a new little developer project section. So you can show me what you're working on in Blender and work in progress or if it's a final product. But uh but yeah, cool. I'm working on a baseball cap for Webby so we can make him look a little bit more realistic. And so I spent a little bit of time on that the past two days just to, you know, just a little side project. Uh, every once in a while, it's kind of like, okay, code every single day, jump in, working on games and all this other stuff. And then every once in a while when I just want to take a break from what the normal pace is and the normal thing that I'm doing, I jump on there and create something in Blender. And I work on my little side projects with uh, my Webby character and different things. Um, they're not two side project. They are part of all the walk the web stuff that I'm doing and branding and everything else. So it's it's still all related, but it's it's a break from doing other things uh, like the coding. But in this case, what we're going to do is I'm going to see if I can't figure out why save transportation didn't work. Let's see if the values come through, and then I'll take it from there. Let me see. Uh, Oh, I didn't set mine to. Do, 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 do. I'm online. There we go. I should be. And I joined the general conversation on Discord. So if you want to catch me or talk to me while I'm while I'm broadcasting, jump on Discord, jump in the general section, and
Okay, so tracking this down a little bit more here. And like I said, if you don't see me streaming live, then you're always welcome to join us on um, on Discord and catch me there. We'll we'll be there often. Uh, I'm there often. I program a lot of hours a day. Can't always stream everything I'm doing, but you know sometimes I have to use my brain. No, <laughs> just kidding. But uh, so when you don't see me on here, you're always welcome to find me on there. Okay, so then I'm gonna take these three names, come over here and check these three values that we're passing into this to make sure that they all have values. Oh, going pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was cool, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's see. Going to check this and see why it didn't record that change. So if I refresh, I have to refresh the page because I did change the values that it gives me after the fact. Um, oh, one more thing I forgot to do. I need to remark out something. What was it? I need to remark out the actual call because if the error is in that section, it'll never give me these values. So check the values here. Yeah, today I'm working. Today I'm working on the animations for any of you just joining us. And basically the animations, um, when he has all the modes, all the keys are wired up to certain animations. They were a direct connection. If you walk, it goes into the walk. If you run, it goes into run. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna make a variable that's a global variable that all you have to do is say, use this character set, and it'll check for if you've added any, um, added any animation that applies to that. If not, it'll default back to the default one. So for example, when we're in paintball and I want to walk forward um, with a rifle in his hand, let's say I picked up a rifle. Well, the second I pick up the rifle, all I want to be able to have to do in my code is say rifle or, um, or say paintball, you know, carry, uh, you know, animations or something. And as soon as I say that word, on them, it's gonna to check to see if those animations exist. If it does, it'll play those animations of like carrying the paintball gun instead of just uh, instead of just walking when I walk forward. So that way, one word change as a global variable should be able to go into other animation sets. So we won't have to worry about, um, it won't be so hard to juggle and add this animation, now tell it to execute the animation and tell it how to move with it and everything else we'll be able to just apply, boom, done. And it uses the animations. So so some cool, it, it'll make it really easy because not only for carrying a weapon, but let's say you go into a crawl mode and you want to be able to crawl around the screen. When you walk forward, it should be crawling forward instead of walking forward. If you uh, do something like uh, lay down and you want to be able to just kind of scoot forward that way, uh, whatever it is, you should be able to just set this one global variable and load the animations of whatever you're going to use by just one single command, hey, this animation, boom, here, load it, and next thing you know, everything works. So trying to make it as simple as possible for switching animations and adding animations to characters with your plugins. So cool stuff, yeah, cool stuff. And right now, I found while I was doing all this stuff, I found one little piece here that broke and didn't want to play nice. Oh, av Z avatar ID is not defined, okay. Z avatar ID should have been defined. It's used in like every single part of this. Avatar ID. Yeah, okay, so... Um, so the thing is, okay, the question on the line is that is the is it about the third person when you're watching it or is it about the first person or even uh, you know when you're using it and stuff like that? Well, the thing is the way it works is it's actually applying it to the animation itself. The first person or third person are basically just camera views. So as long as the avatar is doing it, I can be looking through the first person camera and you'll see it, or I could be looking at it third person or even second person, you know, or something else. Like another person can see me doing it and the animation is still playing and still working in 3D. 
So it's just a matter of what, you know, what gets shown on the screen is a whole nother story of because of the camera view itself. But at the same time, the avatar technically is doing the animation. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, no worries. Okay, so from here, I need to check the value going in and see what's happening because it didn't pass this value all the way through. So I'm going to double check and see my avatar. I should have gotten something from here because it should have been loaded. And if that broke, that would explain why a lot of little pieces here aren't working right. But it said that one was coming up null, which doesn't work well for me. So, And this animation should be here. So we'll pass those two values. Excuse me. And C. I want to see what's getting passed in. I want to make sure it has an ID and that it can receive it on the other end. And once we get that far, then we can take it to the next step. Oh, by the way, I just noticed. Okay, while I'm doing all this stuff, um, I'm going to move my viewer. That should help. Since I'm working on the bottom right over here, the only thing is, of course, every time I go back to the code page, you're going to see me jump back and forth. Uh, it's going to blind it. But see, in the menu here, now you can see the actual menu. I noticed that the other day I was looking at one of my videos and went, I'm talking about something that you've never seen. <laughs> so now when I go in here and say edit my avatar and then avatar animations, now you can see the list of animations since I didn't put my ugly mug right in front of it. Okay, so atomic enhancement. We're going to go to transport rings. Okay, so we have an ID and we have the one that we're going to set going in. So why is it when we call this, we have this, which is avatar ID, ATR ID, and that should go. That should go right to this section here and should spit that back out on the screen. Um, since I want to see what's going on here, I'm going to remark out this section and I'm just going to put this value right here. I want to see what's happening, so I'm going to say Z avatar ID. I want to see that this reads it in before I go any farther and then this avatar animation ID gets read in also which means oh wait I didn't have to delete that all I want to do is take the transport ID since that happens after the fact we'll make it a blank value and now I should be able to do this little piece without errors hopefully oh I actually didn't have to refresh that page because I'm calling that thing on the fly it would have given me the new version right there but let's see what happens. Edit my avatar, avatar animations. And finally, when I go to enter the 3D scene and I switch which one it's working with, okay, I get the two values, but see, I'm still not getting. Eleven seventy six. Um, wait a minute. Oh, that would explain a lot. It's not this, it's, <laughs> that would explain it, sorry. Let me get my brain wrapped back around this. <laughs> it's a Monday on a Thursday, being a brand new year, brand new month, brand new uh, decade, brand new, whatever else you wanna call it. <laughs> uh, it's the biggest Monday we'll have for a long time. Monday on Thursday, got it. <laughs> okay, so that will tell me what I'm getting back on this end of it, and I should be able to find um, the other part is, I think these values should be passed through there. I'm gonna just double check that before I go to the next step, and then we'll go into the actual function to find out what's killing it at that level. Now, yeah, once again, I didn't have to refresh that page. Gotta remember that. Okay, so edit my avatar, avatar animations here, and when I change it, 
Okay, so that's what I expected. We did pass. Oh, wait. Look here. Avatar animation ID came up blank. What happened there? Because I passed in. I passed in avatar animation, not avatar animation ID. There's my mistake. When I call that Z avatar animation, it technically is the ID. So let's go ahead and change that there, there, and there. Now we'll get the right value here because it's ID that we're looking for in here. And I have a feeling that now that I have that piece in place, if I do this, I'll leave this in so we can see what it gives back. And that may have been the problem. So changed it there, there. That passed the right value in. Goes right here. Well, and I need to make sure that it has one there. OK. Now we're passing in a value, and we should get all the way through this process. Fix it on this end. I have to refresh the page. OK, and from here, login, edit my avatar, animations, enter the scene, and we're going to tell it use the transport rings. OK, no errors. OK. Both those value or that value came through, and what did this do? Avatar animation is not defined. Where did I miss one? Um, oh, did it right in front. See, okay, make sure there's no more. If I highlight that, there are no others. I know my own tracking code here killed it. Okay, I'll pull that out. We don't even need it there anymore. We just want to make sure it gets all the way through the process and actually saves the item. We're almost there. We're almost there. And then we'll move on from there. Okay, edit my avatar. Avatar animation enters the scene. And uh, transport rings. Okay, it set it. Transport 1, animation 4, we're good on that. That erred on this thing loading, so now we've set it. Let's see if it gives me the new one. I'll track down that other error later on. Um, it's because I'm using a Babylon version that is actually... Uh, ah, see, there's the transport rings, so it did load it. A little bit of a... Uh, that's a throwback to... Um, Kind of a Superman in <laughs> the old days. And he's in the scene. And, of course, we can switch it anytime we want now. Uh, let's see. How about Fast Pop? Let's just make it go in there when I do it. You guys can pick whatever ones you want. And, by the way, this gets used even if you're in somebody else's scene. It'll automatically use your, your avatar entry that you pick. So it's per user, and if I go back into the scene, you can see I just did the fast pop just so that when it's done build my avatar, he just comes into the scene for now. I don't need to waste any of your time sitting there watching animations for now. <laughs> and there he is. Boom, he's in there. Okay, so I'm going to do login, which that was another little pet peeve. I clicked the login button. It actually logged in, but it's not refreshing the page. I'm going to track that down. That was another little thing that happened recently. I must have changed something and it caught this particular piece. Uh, there, there's a couple different functions that um, are reused more than once. And because of that, it ends up having some other pieces in place here um, that aren't needed. Let's see. Okay, by the way, before I move on, I'll do that other piece in a second. But what I do is every time I fix something, um, I, I work it into the next update listing so that I know exactly what I've done. This is um, fix. Uh, fix. Save. Save avatar. E 
Save avatar transportation or transportation. So avatar animation should should have been Z animation ID. Okay. Problem resolved. There we go. And my name in there. Usually I copy and paste my name. It's not that I don't know my name. It's the exact format that I did it. <laughs> Trying to be consistent. And it's like, okay, got to get it every single time the exact same way. But right now I didn't want to do that because I have something I'm looking for there in my queue of copy and paste. Okay, so I'm going to look for this with an equal sign after it. Find in files. That'll take me right to the function. And there it is. Okay, login attempt. Let's see what happens. Um, we request this. It goes to the users and login attempt response. Okay, so once again, we, I, I I'm not going to blame you. Um, we pass the username, the email, and the password for the login. We do the function login. And we should get something back, which takes us to the login response. So let's put a couple telltales in place. This stuff needs to work all the time. And the fact that I broke it in the last update, <laughs> I definitely want to fix that. So if it gets this far, I just want to know, is it actually getting this far? Or is it having a problem before it ever gets there? I'm suspecting this because I haven't tested all the handlers after I threw them all in place. A lot of them I did, don't get me wrong. I did test a lot of things. I just didn't finish testing each and every one of these. So because of that, we could easily be ending, uh, end up with a few of these pieces not in place. For example, I don't think it's running this process because it would have changed this login word and everything else to my logged in status and it would have switched this menu and all those other pieces. So I'm thinking it tripped up right here. First thing I'm gonna do is double check that we have email is our, if login has that else, Username's login, email could be blank when it sends it in, that's fine. It's just gonna pick both these values, send them in here, and then use whichever one gets passed in running the login function on this handlers page. So if that all makes sense, that's what it's gonna do. And so we're going to users, and we're gonna go login process, which is this one. I'm gonna check just to make sure that we get these three values passed in here. And they should be, in fact, not just should, they are, um, these values are uh, base64 encoded. So the values that show up on my screen when I re reveal them here aren't gonna be the actual values, it's gonna be the base64 code. Uh, it doesn't mean somebody couldn't hack that, but you know something, uh, if you're doing that and you're trying to hack me that hard, then you're going to get through on that particular piece. But considering every you know, month or so, I blow this out and retest the install process. So this is just my dev site. Worst case, you're going to make me just reload it again. And I load it, like I said, often enough anyway. Have backup copies of everything I'm doing as I do it daily. And yeah, there's all kinds of good stuff I do. So... Not worth a hack. You're hacking a development sandbox. <laughs> and the sandbox gets cleared often. 
Okay, so we have these values and I'm going to pass those the same way we did on the avatar type stuff. Okay, I'm gonna close those avatar files. Uh, my own <laughs> my own little thing I do. And um, I'm gonna do this on purpose here. There, I have an updates directory and what I do is new folder, well, you know what, instead of even doing it that way, I fixed this avatar thing and there's only two files involved in it. So I'm going to throw them out there because I want to make sure that I don't miss an update. So in this case, it was scripts. It is uh, avatars. Well, see, this is why I use the other subdirectory. Now you can see why I do it. Okay, watch. I can go. This is a quick fix for the way I do this. Updates, I create folder core. And under here, we have handlers. And we also have scripts. A new folder. Scripts. And under scripts, we have new folder avatars and also primary okay so in here avatars um, I changed this file I already know I did and under scripts we have prime and I changed between core and common there were a couple things I changed in there so I'm gonna put both of those out there and then in handlers is the easiest way to put them in from here I guess it's the way I've been doing it it doesn't mean it's the best way okay so I've included those files in this process right here now I have from my updates folder if I just upload files to the site oops drag it and now updated and I like to do the reference point that I'm currently working under for my update and then finally the last part of this um, instead of retyping that whole thing again it's a lot easier to go to my database oops get that file back up if I just do this since I typed the whole thing already and put it on the site there we go and okay we're good just check the stuff there okay so then when I update that and commit that change now I'm not worried about remembering about it I've already got it in both places I mark it and in here I can now close off load avatar and you know I'm leaving those files open because I'm using them still but okay so that clears off a couple of those different pieces um, and I know I've updated it to the site, so every once in a while I go through and check all the files, but right now don't have to do that. Okay, so okay, the next piece is this login. I'm going to be checking these values. I want to see that each one of these come back, and this is happening in my common file and so I'm going to check right here um, I just want to see that this process actually happens like it's supposed to so let's go users we have these four pieces um, it could tell me if there's an error too so I want to check them all I'll just drop that there for a second basically the username equals plus that uh, and then add this response to it won't forget that twice in a row and then I have three other values user email password I just want to see that everything's getting passed the way it should and then that we're getting the response that we expect if not it'll help troubleshoot where it's happening okay save that 
And I also want to, well, I gotta log out before I can even test that. So let's go back to the console. And see, I'm logged in. I'm gonna click log out, which puts it back to login. Ooh, see, we have an error there too. That's worth fixing also. Load avatar, okay. We'll get to the logout part. Let's do one of them at a time. I know, I'm starting with all this stuff. I wanted to get to that other piece, and I will today. I plan on it. But when you find errors, you got to fix them all. So I have a feeling these are all related. When I fix one, I'm probably going to find the error that needed to be done to fix them all. Okay, so when I click login, basically I have that. No user email, and I have that. Login response, I have my user. Okay, I'm getting the full response and it attempts the login response. S error is blank, so there's no error being returned. It does know my user and everything. Okay, so the error on the login is not this part. It actually completed all of this without a problem. And then in here, the only thing I'm reading is S error to see if it had an error. So, oh, and also user ID, user. Okay, so everything's coming through the way it should. So this part shouldn't be a problem. Um, login response, okay, so I'm good with the whole login response. Login response should be this full value here. Okay, so we have all that information. This all worked, but once it got to this piece, so the attempt worked, it even logged in, which means everything happened on the PHP side. So something happened in this section um, I don't think, oh, I think it's layered differently. See how it has login response? The login response should be the S error. So if I change that to this, then I think that's going to be what I expect out of the login response. I have to, I'll have to check the register at a later time too. But I think that's going to be recover login email. I think all these are going to be doing the same thing. It needed to be the root level for the values that it brought back. And because I put it under login response, it was not doing that. So I think, therefore I am. Huh. Just kidding. Okay, so I have additional. I'm going to click log out. And we know that there's an error in the log out. Ooh, a 500 error. I just blew something else up. Let me see, Z login response equals this. What else did I mess up? Um, well, I guess there's the other way of doing it. I think I need it to be in the array format because I don't think I'm bringing back an array from here. So if that's the case, I may have stringified it before. Oh, wait a minute. I can fix it on the other end. Never mind. If I go into login attempt, find login files. And in this function class users login attempt, um, in here, I create this user array. And when it does its whole bit, the user array is what, oh, but see, I JSON encoded it. If I take off that JSON encoding, then I should be able to set it as the array. And I think the same thing happens here. No? Okay. Fix one at a time. Okay, so take that back. Let's find out. And don't worry about the cheesy graphics. We're going to work on that stuff here in the next couple coming weeks anyway. Okay, so what was I doing? Oops, I'm doing the login. Login is that. Login attempt happened. And it did not do any of the process, which means it still doesn't line up with what it expects back in this end. So login response, it gives us the login response. Uh, which actually, all we have to do is this. This is the login response. I don't even need two lines for that. 
Okay, so now what is it returning? It is returning, it's returning this array right here. So as the root, it should have S error and each one of these items directly in the array when it comes back. Let's see. And it's a single level array. Okay. So if S errors not undefined, if results are there, I need to see what's happening here. This should all happen. So first thing I want to see is S error is blank. I already know that's not going to be the case. But let's find out right here two things. Well, results is not null. I already know that one. And when it comes in, login response, JSON parse, do I need to? No, because I'm JSON encoding it. I need to parse it. Oh, login response. I don't need that anymore. Oh, that's why it triggered it. That's why I was able to do login response and then pull it. Okay, fine. I cleaned that up anyway. Less code. We get the same thing. Now we have the response. Now we should be able to run these items all the way through there. That was the only part that calls that code is this piece right here. So I'm okay with doing the login process um, only from here. And I'll undo it here. Or log off and then log back on and we'll see if we fix that one. So click here, log out. We'll fix that in a minute. And there's something going on with that piece. Okay, so log in. And when I click log in, there it goes. Now it loaded this and total frames of undefined. Ooh, there's something not there. Okay. I'll I want to try this from another point here. I didn't have the avatar fully loaded when I did it, so I think it was expecting it, but we're running into the, we, we've got a couple errors still. Let's track them down. There's a 500 error, which usually tells me that we should get some feedback on that error. Let's find out here. I got a bunch of, uh, inner image not being saved. Is, oh, that's wrong place, sorry. This one. Okay, those are all fine. Functions in this class, 16, 16, uh, 165, sorry. The S looked like a 5 to me. Okay, so in 165 in WTW users, 165 has an error right here. Oh, that's where they told me the error. That doesn't help. Undefined method in the class logout main throne handlers blah 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 oh that's funny the error that it threw was that it can't find that class from the handlers oh that's why because this is being called by handlers now. It's not being called by WTW. That would make a difference. So in here, instead of this, I need this to be WTW handlers. Okay. And that would make a big difference. But this one, um, actually, handlers should be loaded when I load this file. Uh, it should be loaded before this ever runs. Uh, so I think I'm good for doing the global handlers. Is that the same thing that happens? Oh, WTWDB, okay. Um, WTWDB is okay. That one is available still because I'm doing handlers and that one. Um, that's fine. You know, I could do it from this one. Then I can call it from multiple 
uh, from different pieces. And there and there. That should be okay. But it did have an error and it wasn't able to run that file for logout, so there was already something else wrong. We'll track that down. Okay, so let's let it load just to do it. Okay, so we have our avatar. Log in, log in. And does it go all the way in without errors? Let's see. Loading up all the animations and takes a bit. Need to make that faster. I'll work on that. I'll work on that. That's all my plans, by the way. Uh, let's see. Come on. What didn't it do? It tells me I'm logged in, and that all works, but my avatar never shown. Is the avatar in the scene? This is where the, this is where it helps to be in dev mode instead of, uh, instead of browsing mode, because from here, let's find out if the guy loads. Oh, see, he loads here, but see, it's when I tell it to load in the front scene. Okay, I gotta track down something. I think what's happening is the avatar, um, I think it's loading it, but it's coming in blank. See, from here I can tell from dev tools, I can tell what it's doing. Uh, but we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna tell it to log out, which tells it to go back to here. Okay, so log in. I tell it to log in. Uh, total frames of undefined. See, it doesn't like that because I don't think it was, it wasn't done loading our other character. That was happening on the old character, not the new one that's being loaded, I think. Because when I loaded directly after it loaded the full other avatar, it basically was able to finish. Um, this could be a quick fix, though. Let's see. Load avatar 2343. I'm just doing some troubleshooting. So 2333, okay, we're somewhere in there. What did it say, 2333, or 2343, okay. 2343, I know some of these days where I'm troubleshooting isn't the most glamorous to be broadcasting on and stuff and streaming. You guys want to see me do some Blender, you want to see me add some animations. But believe me, everything runs smoother if I do this piece right now, too. So in here, this part, all I need is to check this if this is not null. Okay, so if it checks it, if it's not null, then it does this part. Um, I don't even need it to run the rest of that statement. If that didn't work, we're not getting that part to work, that's for sure. I think I will... I'm going to take this from here to there even though I may take it even farther. Because if you erased your atom, if this doesn't come up and you haven't run the animations, then this piece isn't gonna work, this piece isn't gonna work, and these things are, you're not even, you don't have an avatar to even get this far. So that wouldn't finish the process. So I think this part needs to, I think it needs to be related to this and not try to put these in here. Well, one of the keys that I'm going to have to do, I can tell you this already, is probably make it where you can't log out until it finishes loading because otherwise you're going to be loading the avatar over the top of the old avatar. If one process hasn't finished and the new one comes in, the old process may try to write over and, and actually be included in the new process. And there could be duplicate names for different uh, animations being applied to it. 
So, yeah, I, I know. That one is kind of a tri trivial one. Okay, so now I'm in the scene, and I'm going to click log out. Um, it should go back to my other avatar. Don't worry about the camera views right now. That's another piece I'm going to work on. It should load the default avatar. So we're losing it someplace in here where it doesn't actually reload the avatar. So when it finishes the process of log out or log in, there's something missing in the piece. So we're going to track that down. Okay, so from here, but that corrected that error. That didn't, that didn't happen this time. In here. When I do the login response, for example, we know we did that piece and we're finding it at thing. So we should say set login values and that all worked, but get saved avatar. This function should have worked. So I'm going to go there, find in files. Okay, find all. I know I call this from a number of places get saved avatar from here reload is true so we do know what that's going to do and from here we should get an instance of the avatar and this one is pulling from the connect places this is not pulling from the other section that's all fine we should is what part of this is not okay avatar is not null which it i'm going to need to know which section it's getting into here load avatar from db should be the one it's running i want to see if that triggers this right here because that's where it's going to go back to the database and actually get the avatar and and do it so I'm gonna put that right there and see if that happens when I tell this what to do because it could be putting it in the scene and then it's just not turning it on to visible uh, depending on the circumstances it may not be setting it to visible so if that's the case that's different than some of the other conditions okay so we have this guy log in I set login and load avatar from DB was fine on the first one because that was my uh, anonymous avatar and it came from the database because I've already saved it. That did not get that far. So I'm waiting it out just to make sure. Eh, it didn't do anything. Okay. So copy that. I want to see that get saved avatar happens. And then once it does, um, let's try. Uh, trust me, I'm going to put a one before it does that. So in case that first line errors, it won't have a problem. And then. Um, response is not zero. I'm just putting some markers in here so that I have some way of telling which section this went into. If that doesn't, if that happens, um, then here we're going to go four. Because if it's tripping on one of these and it needs to get to a different one, then there's a condition that wasn't managed well or wasn't set properly. There's some term that's missing in the condition. So I'm going to make sure that each one of these have their respective callbacks in the right place. That should get me to that one. So I should see which one it's tripping into. So if one of these else if conditions did something where it should be going all the way down to here, we're going to find out. Otherwise, going to be able to track this down, see where it's going. So let's see. Bum, ba, bum, 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 bum. Okay, so it did all those on loading the avatar from the database. See, this all makes sense that it loaded my anonymous avatar. That's all good. We do have that piece. I'll speed up the download, don't worry. And okay, so the first thing I want to do is log out. 
and it made it all the way through 7, which told it to load Avatar from DB. We should be loaded. I'm not sure what's happening. Oh, there it is. And he logged out. Oh, that was logged out. Okay. We're logged out. Log in and click login from here. Get saved avatar. Oh, it went through number five. So number five. Does have a load avatar from DB? Oh, it's um, it's making sure that we've wiped out the current avatar. Um, set avatar on camera. Wait a minute. Set avatar on camera. Uh, that might not be needed. It's okay. Um, but I'm wiping out the avatar right after I set the avatar on camera, <laughs> so that seems to be counterintuitive. I think it's setting my points. See, this one, load avatar from DB, doesn't set the avatar on camera, or set camera on avatar. That part I don't think really matters because it's disposing the avatar right after I set the camera on it. So that's already going to trip away from that. Um, load avatar from DB, it did get to that step even from number five. So from here, load avatar from DB, I should have been able to go to that one. And the first thing I'm going to do is knock it out of here, because that isn't where I thought it was going. And here, I'm going to put it right here, just so that we have this process saying when it actually runs this file. Um, what's happening here um load my avatar is the this is the pre load gets everything set all the values and we're good on all that and then it goes to this process which is load my avatar and that is where it's actually going out there and grabbing the avatar uh, it's doing it right here is actually building the avatar using the whole statement so on all this data and every information that it's used um, load avatar from DB is okay load my avatar do, 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 do. yeah so we should be getting this whole piece right here this is where it should start I want to see that it's getting to this line right. Well, actually, that should create the avatar, and it should be loading all the animations after that. So if it gets that far, if I'm going to say when it gets that far, um, I'm going to put the word finish there just so I know that it actually called the avatar to be created. So click this, start from scratch. Uh, first of all, finished. Yes, it did pull the avatar from there and it's loading all the animations. Notice that um, it does it invisible until it completes loading the animations and then it shows you on the screen. So let's see, does it show me my avatar? There it is on the screen. So that works. I'm gonna log out and it says finished, which means that the item is created, but for some reason, which there's a condition on the end of it, that is telling it um, when it's finished to run a certain, oh, there it is. So that one worked going to there and then if I click login, this was the one I was more worried about. Was I just not? Okay, so it went all the way to finished. Uh, I don't need to leave that open. I don't like the way that separates in there, but that's going to be another day. Um, the scroll was wrong. 
Okay, is it just taking longer to do or is it not loading? There's two different conditions here. Taking a long time is something I'm going to fix also. Uh, I have some work I'm doing on that stuff that'll make it a lot better. Well, while we're waiting to see if it actually pops up on the screen, I'm actually going to jump over to um, I'm going to jump over to a five minute break and refill my coffee cup. So I will be right back.
Okay, I'm back, and guess what? Our avatar never showed up, which means I know where the code is. Okay, the good news is it is calling all this stuff. We are creating our avatar, so I'm going to backtrack a couple steps here. We know that it's getting that far. So I'm um, just going to take out some of these little markers. They were a good way to check and see what's going on, but now that we already know that piece is working, we're not going to need each one of these. Okay, we know we're getting saved avatar. We know we're getting these log files. We know we went to the right section because it did tell it to load the avatar. Maybe one of these days I'll check out and try to see if I'm using all these different things. I know I added these conditions while we were coding and there was a reason at the time, so I'm not pulling anything out of there just yet. But um, okay, so that should get us that far. And now here's the deal. In here, there's a section where it actually... Oops, too far. It would be load avatar animations. When this process runs, it loads up each avatar animation, and then at the very end of it, if this is where we should be getting to, and that's the section I just changed, total frames, it does this piece. Um, still think if this piece was dead, then there's no reason to do any of these parts, but I need to double check. I'm going to put this back outside of there for now, even though I think that's going to, I, I think it's fine, but we'll, we'll do this anyway. Okay, so from here, depending which one it does, if animate equals false, then it starts the animation, else if else if else. Um, I think it's starting the animation here and then that one should have brought it back. Let me find out which one this is going through. So WTW log and put that as one that this is two now I remind you that some of these are telling it that it's not done loading all the animations to continue so we're gonna see some of these numbers happen more than once and then when they finally don't happen more than once then we should find out which one it's in um, so we should be able to see where the last thing is because one of these two things should have happened avatar enter or show visible and we should see them. So at some point it should hit number four here, or it should be ours, and it should do number three with this right here. I don't know why I still have that in place. Avatar enter, I don't know why load sit. Oh, I was teaching it how to sit. Okay, so that's gonna be, that's just a temporary thing. That's actually not gonna be there in the final part. So I'm gonna remark that out while we're here. Okay, loading it up. So it loads it from scratch, so I know that everything's working from there. It's the condition of when it was loaded, when it's, when I'm not logged in, and then I become logged in, that's when it's not coming in. So, okay, if that makes sense. And the camera views are gonna jump around a little bit here, now it does it. I'm still working on the camera views, that'll be another day. So two happened a bunch of times, three, and then 10, 11, 12, two happens a bunch of times, and then it shows with three, okay. So three is my, yep, this is our main one that it goes through because it's our avatar that we're doing. This happens for other avatars joining your scene. So three is the one we're expecting it to hit. Okay, so 
when it finishes. Two is we're not done. It's not the last animation. Keep loading. Three does all of them. Okay, so now if I click login, click login, it starts creating it. And here's our two. two it's going, going, going. 10, 11, 12, 15, and then it went to three. So three happened, but for some reason, it's not in the scene. So we're getting right to here, and then that or this should have brought it in here. Enter animate means Hmm. Well, let's find out which one. I guess we keep plugging along here. So 3A or 3B. Each one, it's either going to be show visible or enter at avatar. So we should see which one that is then decide what it's gonna do from there. Okay. Could be a value that we're bringing back when we do that. See, the thing is, when we load from scratch, it works, which tells me that the process of doing something isn't setting a flag or set it to the wrong type of value when we're doing it in line and it just continues working. We have some value that it doesn't like. So it's going 3A when it does that. If I log out, I know this takes a little time, but it's worth checking. Okay, and 3A happens for that. Now if I log in and log in, what's happening diff different this time? First of all, I don't need to open my profile every time I change. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, 3A. It went into that process again, but this time it didn't show it. So let's find out. 3A, enter av avatar, enter, which I think is like right below this. Now yeah, I'll find it. Avatar enter. Let's see, the one I'm coming from, 2366. I just want to get a visual reference of where I'm at. That one right there. Okay, so below this. Yeah, that's no problem. Okay. The enter animation is that. I want to make sure that is getting written when it happens because obviously if that doesn't come through we get default it should still show visible it should go to visible if nothing else comes through that matches but let's find out WTW log here is the enter animation equals What's happening there? Something's happening at one of these levels. We're almost there. Oh, forgot. Got to log off, then log in to make it happen. So the first condition is to log out. And I know it ran into a problem on that on that undefined because it was trying to do something on something that we just deleted. We removed the avatar when I logged out. Enter animation was one, which makes sense because that was just the pop in. So now if I click this, the enter animation should be one because that's what I set it to. No, yeah, I did. I think I, s no, bleh. This is a different animation. Uh, it said one. So it went to enter, enter animation one, should have avatar show visible which is the same as the default so find find in files okay
And this particular one should have been just going through, set everything to visible. It's on the scale level that it finds it, and we should have avatar parts length here. Let's see if at this point either it was passed in here, or it was passed in, or it was created here by being undefined. So one way or another, we should have these avatar parts. So let's find out a couple values. First, make sure we pass the name, and then I'm going to also find out that avatar parts, and I'm just going to do avatar parts length, because of course it's a, it's an array. So let's find out if the array has something in it, and let's, oh, let's, if it gets this far and it has that, it should have gone to visible. That's the bottom line. It should have done it. So either this isn't getting passed or this isn't getting passed, but something is coming up blank and we're going to find it. Then we can backtrack and find out where that value was supposed to come from. But something right there isn't... Okay, I don't have to wait for it. We'll just do it this way and pop the error. It's fine. Okay, we're going to let this one completely load because I don't want to run into a problem with that. Um, it's getting all the animations, and he's here. After parts three, we're good to go. Log in. And this one should take us through. And this time, we should get the name, and there's nine parts. So if that's the case, what's different? Name is exactly the same. Avatar parts is nine instead of just three on the first one, which is fine, because the avatar um, only has three parts for the that one. Okay, so if all the parts are here and I'm setting them all to visible, where are they? It's here. <laughs> it's here. Camera view is an issue. Camera view needs to be refreshed. Okay. That I can do. When it finishes this stage... All I have. So that was the only problem. The camera was in was in the wrong place, so it wasn't actually behind the guy. So after checking all those different places and jumping through the code, the only problem we actually had is at the bottom of avatar enter, no matter which process it does to get in there, I should go right here. Switch camera one. If I'm not mistaken, that's all I need to fix the problem. Let's test that, and then we'll see if it works. So it was a camera view issue. It wasn't a problem of the avatar coming into the scene. Wow, that was something I didn't notice. So the camera that I was using became the position of where the avatar stands. And because of that, it was actually just enough in front of it that we didn't see our own avatar. Once I told it to change the avatar camera, it actually found that position once again. See, I'm getting these bounce around different things. Um, so, so there is a way to get that in place here. Okay, so we get this avatar. He's fully loaded. And if I click login, and when it fully loads, so you can click switch avatar, uh, switch camera at any point in time. What it does, see, there it is. Boom, we fixed it. Okay, that's all that was, was a camera issue. 
the avatar was there the whole time the camera just wasn't attached to him and wasn't uh set to the proper one by saying camera avatar switch camera one all it does is look to see what your default value is that's already been set for this camera in both these values and then just refreshes the camera on the scene so we didn't actually change camera well we changed camera view by setting it to the view that the avatar is told to use okay so now that we have that i can remove well that's a good one to fix because now we can switch back and forth between logging on and off and our avatar is actually in view like we would expect it to be um where's all my code here show visible there they are these items we want to knock out of here so that we're not we don't want to process all these okay I think we're good on the load avatar animations okay so we got all those um, that's all good now I know there was a few more pieces that I had labeled uh, no it's just the numbers I already took them out good okay so taking that into account I think we're good to go now we should be able to load our avatar anytime we go in fact if I just refresh my screen I should have an avatar in it since I'm logged in should be my red shirt dude okay so we're good to go we have avatars and notice he walks he does what he needs to so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to yay so we did some troubleshooting before we got started on our other parts but I'm gonna go into buildings um no actually communities sorry select community and I'm gonna jump into our paintball scene oh wait I set up a test scene the other day so we don't have to load the whole building each time. Um, it's in my buildings, select building, and I want to go to the test site. What I did on the test site is I've created, I created an area, action zone type, paintball zone. So when I'm in this zone, now don't worry about the gun so much at the moment, but when I'm in this zone, we do have um, let me see when I'm in see this zone okay the ground level of the zone is the same as the ground level on the thing if I edit let me edit that zone I don't want to keep on seeing the ground sparkle like that so by choosing here paintball zone I can go just even one degree less notice the ground shows also this is a gray that's where we left it the other day so save action zone notice it's good on this level when I show all zones but when I create the zone it didn't know how to handle that um, that should be in our common file it's called I think it's even called show action zone Spell it right. Yes, I did. Huh, that's really funny. It doesn't find that one. Um, I know. If I tell it to action zone, I'm going to get a million of them. That's probably not the best way to find them through here. Rotate mold name. Oh, gosh. I'm going to have too many of them. Let's see. Let's go with show. I think it was show. <laughs> Show tooltip. Oops, fine. Um, Show tooltip. Show tooltip. Let's see. Um, it's not in that file of common. Oh, maybe it's an admin. Maybe that's why I didn't find it. No, that's not the right name. 
Boy, I am really hit batting a thousand on this one today. Um, okay, show action zone is the name of the file. I just was looking in the wrong piece. Okay, here we go. So then, out of all these, default set opacity of action zone. That should have happened when I didn't create the new one in any of these processes. It should have created the action zone using okay so go back to our plugin I created this in a plugin so I'm jumping back to there and when I tell it to um, add paintball zone if oh here's where it is I'm not telling it that process I'm telling it the opacity is this that is not the best way to do that um, well my problem is this first of all this adds it to the queue which means it does not automatically create the mold puts it in the queue to create it which means set opacity on this item means absolutely nothing because the item isn't um, isn't available yet. So, so that doesn't mean anything. This piece right here, this whole questionable piece, uh, needs to be in the queue area. Okay, I will need all three of these parts, copy that, and well, I'll leave this page open anyway so I can find it, um, add mold to queue, find that, that's even easier than that, put a equal sign after it, now we find the function, oh, uh, it's not an admin, I'm sorry, it's in there. Okay. And in here, and the reason I found that was because I can find process mold queue. Okay, so when it comes through here, add action zone, action zone gets added through this piece, which means it knows which one to add. And that's it. Oh, I see the error of my ways. This adds the action zone. The action zone adds a mold that isn't available. The mold gets added here, and that doesn't even happen until here. That's when the mold gets added. So any time after that, if it's mold group equals action zone, so if mold group equals action zone, which is going to be caught by, oh, mold group is not action zone. If mold, if it's molds, which is not the case, if if mold name is molds, which this is not the case, else, and. I'm going to shove that in there for a second. Uh, I'm probably going to get rid of the, well, I'll just say else if admin view equals one, I don't, I can do this a little cleaner. But if this zones are shown, set opacity and action zone name and action zone def, these aren't going to be here. Um, it is going to be if
See, mold zion D is the number. Mold death IND. Okay, so if I go here, do. This one's a little tricky. This is going to be the mold. Mold ID is equal to that. Then set mold. Action zone name is going to be mold name. And that should make it show when I create it. So let me see what happens here. Because it's telling it to create it and show it at the same time. So now by doing that, uh, first of all, it is this one here. Nope, see, it's already showing it wrong. It's already showing it wrong. Why is that layer right there showing it as that? Um, how about change this one to um, I start scrolling away from it. I want show uh, show action zones. That's an admin file, so that's the only time it's ever going to come up. And then I need the action zone IND, which would be should be so show action zone. I know I keep on repeating myself. I think you've heard those words a couple times now. Uh, I'm going to change this to show action zone, and this be mold IND, which should be. Uh, right here. I'm passing it to there. That. Let's see if that does it. Well, there's another way to test this stuff too. In our show action zones. This is being shown because I have that button selected. If I come in here and take this, I want to see each action zone, what their names are, and see if it's in this list, because then maybe it's just the color that's coming out, not the fact that it's showing or not that made it dark. Okay, so name equals action zone dot. Is it mold name or action zone name? Let's find out. I believe it's action zone name. We're going to find out right now. The second it turned it on. And we have paintball zone right there. Oh, that's the action zone name. Oh, it's the longhand action zone name. Paintball zone. He did it twice. That's interesting. Two things called it because I just told it to call it and it was already called. Um, we do not need this here. I'll be coming back to that in a minute. Um, I'm going to be revisiting this, and instead of adding that mold to the queue, I think I'm going to generate the mold automatically and then color it instead of going to the queue with this. I think that'll be a better process. But to finish what I was doing, it's not that. The, the type is what matters. The action zone name is fine that I had it. Oops, wrong page. No wonder I'm not seeing what I wanted. Little bit of mumbling today. I hope that's not a new habit for 2020, huh? <laughs> I'll break it by tomorrow. You've heard it here. <laughs> okay, so what do I have? I have this process is finding that piece, but when it runs it, let's do the action zone type. The action zone type shouldn't be found, which means 
set opacity should fall under default. Default should be setting it to one. Oh, there's my problem. Why is default? Everything else is listed of all the ones I've created. I think if I'm setting the opacity of an action zone, I think point two would be better for the action zone. The poles and stuff are a different story, but I think that one needs to be that. And when it happens to hide the action zone in here, the opacity should be back to zero. There is my error. I found it. Now, now that I found it, I can pull that back out. And watch when I see that's dark gray right now. If I refresh that page. Okay, we are now. Notice it's transparent. Yay, 0 0.3. I mean 0 0.2. So it's partial transparency. My avatars are taking a long time to load today. That was not the case before. I know there's something going on there. But, okay. Don't know why. I don't know. Some I'm doing, I'll have to make sure we're not doing anything wrong, but I'll get to that. Okay, so without the zone shown, if I go here now and say edit building, edit action zone, select the zone, paintball zone, it knows it's trans. Wow, it's so transparent. Too transparent. Okay. Ah, because they all loaded, it loaded, but it's not showing them currently. I can fix that by doing exactly what I was talking about. So instead of add mold to the queue, I need to basically build a mold here, which will be um, add mold. There's the depth, there's the parent, there's the covering, and null. I should be able to create that just like that. And then this should make sense for setting the opacity because we are now working on the one that's already created instead of telling it to queue and create it because then we'd have to tell it after the fact when to show. Since it's already been queued to do the whole action zone anyway, it doesn't pay to pause that and make it wait. Okay, so edit building, edit action zone, and paintball zone. Ah, see, it's loaded there. Did not show it. Did this step show? Let's find out. I still think I want... zone and this would be mold def animation ind I think that's a better approach um, action zone ID let's go with the action zone I know this one set it over here okay so that should create that let me see if this, we know it's going to go here. Or do we? <laughs> okay, we'll give that a one. Okay, and set that to a two. We should have a box created. Because it's putting lines on the box, so I have a feeling that the box was created. Loading the page. Paintball zone, it went to one, but it did not go to two. Okay, I'm not showing it just yet, but it's created. So now if I edit the building, edit action zone. Okay. And it didn't trigger that again. So the action zone already exists. When I run this process, I need to set the opacity of the zone that I'm working on. That particular piece didn't do it. 
I should have gotten all the way into that area. Okay. Oh, you can turn mine off if you would. Yeah, conserving. Yeah. No worries. Okay, and we have, okay, so this thing should have turned it on when we're editing the zone. So I don't know why that didn't happen, and that's the part I'm going to investigate. Um, turns out that this part didn't matter because the only time that mattered would have been if we're already showing the zones when we load the actual piece. But because it's already there, we don't run this process just by editing the zone. So what I need to do is... Um, when I open the zone for editing, there's something in that area. Um, if I open, open action zone, find next, opens form, that's the one I was looking for. And when I open this, what I'm doing is loading up the form, action zone, Action zone type is not blank, which is good. This would be creating a new one if it was blank. Okay, we're loading up all the where in the fields. That's the other way around. This is where we got it. If we're loading one that already exists, we bring up all this stuff. Get load action zone list, action zone form fields. That's all good. Add action zone. See, it should have added the action zone again right there. Oh, if it's null. Show action zone should have happened right here. So, that's interesting. Okay. If I go here, I should have hit right here for this action zone type. Um, let's find out what's going on. Uh, and when I show it, this, oh, is it set to visible? Um, visible, and the edges are showing. Okay, we should get it. Everything is in place to make it happen. Let me just see what's happening. It takes me right back to this spot. But see, I already know that this was working at this point in time. Um, I just need to make sure it gets triggered at when that opens. So we'll find out which piece is blocking that action. Okay, so there's the type. We should get this right here. And let's find out what happens. Okay. Oh. Missed it. Do, 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 do. Okay, and if I building, edit action zones, and load the paintball zone, it gets loaded and it even went to default. That zone should have come in clear. Why is it not? I should be able to see that zone. Is it not transparent from both sides? Let me find out. Walk out of the box. 
do 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 and right there and there's a little bit of a fade to it not really and until it's that high oops That's very interesting. So it doesn't remember that I was editing it. <laughs> okay. Okay, pink ball zone. See, it's that big. But it is not showing outside of here. Actually, it's I'm right on the line. And it is not showing as transparency. Oh, gosh, it's such a faded. Okay, not sure why that's happening. I'll find out soon enough. There's everything else that I was loading as I walk up on it. And But see, the thing is, if I go to zones, it is showing me that zone with the faded section on it. Okay, fine. I don't know why. Come back to that. <laughs> No reason. I mean, it's doing the code and it's telling it to go that. But I think what it is is it's my fog, because I set a fog on the page. Ever since then, it gives me a weird effect on these zones when I go to just point two. I may have to darken them just to see them. I don't know. But in the same time, as long as the code is processing, I'm not as worried about that at the moment. Since the lines go around the box, the box is physically there and it's actually trying to show it. So a um, number of pieces are in place and it shouldn't be having a problem with that okay so that's not i'm just going to call that for now a non-issue and that's a eh, that falls in the category of like almost like css things to me where okay i'll make it look pretty later but let's get all the functionality in place Okay, so my avatar is not only loading, but at this time, since I'm in the paintball zone, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be telling it to load additional animations. So um, here's the deal. Went a couple hours, and um, basically we fixed a number of things. We didn't get to all the animation stuff that we wanted, but we did fix some some of the animation things. So I'll be continuing on, a, on my way on this. Uh, if you want to find me on Discord, you'll see me on Discord continuing to work on some of these places. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click the rerun switch and get this going on here. But um, anything you want, if you want to come on in, check it out, or if you want to reach me directly, hit me on Discord. I'm going to continue programming and working on things, and then I will be back streaming live on uh, Twitch tomorrow. So have a great day, and it's a happy new year. Um, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you again real soon.